Get on in here, everybody. It's that time again. Yeah, it's time. And I don't know if my microphone's working, so I'm gonna pull my other microphone out of my handy little pouch because I put it where it belongs. Got it right here. I'm gonna load it up. Take this one out of my ear. Anyway, I've been the Energizer Bunny today. It's 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 trash day and clean out. It's clean out the refrigerator day because it hadn't been cleaned out in about a week, and we're getting it done. Got got clothes, the washing machine going, and lots of things happening. So today is day five of our back to basics. But I want to finish up day one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, day five, and I have. Um, we're gonna do. We're gonna finish up the baby step book t tomorrow. But I'm pulling it up. Day today's the thirtieth. Thirtieth. So why are there not any people in here? Well, this is not good. What's going on? I don't know why there's not many people here. Is Am I coming to you from the Fly Lady page? Give me thumbs up if I was on the Fly Lady page when I did it. Sometimes I get mixed up. It just happens. 48. It's taken a while for people to get in here. Usually that means I'm not on the right page. Yes, I'm on the right page. Thanks, whoever Patty lives. I don't know. Here's to being on the right page. I'm trying to see. No, there's just a reflection on the TV. Got the refrigerator cleaned out, got laundry going. If you hear noise in the background, it's because um, the wash machine is right here. And we're doing towels and t-shirts. We got some new t-shirts that need to be washed. So I don't know why people aren't getting in here. I got questions and answers. Maybe I need to, um, Maybe I need to log out and log back in again. What do y'all think? You want me to try it? He's sleeping right now. He's resting. It's day four after chemo and he's kind of bummed out. There, we're getting some people in here. So we're on day 30, the 30th of January. To stay organized, check your calendar twice a day. Any upcoming birthdays. See? You kind of need to know that. And check in your calendar. Let me get the calendar out here. But I have to tell you, we have a new baby in our, our Fly Lady family. Fly Lady Tammy has a new grandson. His name is River, River Ray. And he was born, uh, I think about 11 o'clock last night on January the 29th. And we are so happy to have a new youngin in the family and be able to watch him go. I went to his parents' wedding a couple, well, it'll be two years ago in this, this summer. And, um, uh, they are so excited about this new little addition to their family. It's just wonderful seeing a new life and, and uh, knowing that they're gonna, that Little River is gonna be raised in a happy home. And we're just so proud of, of Jacob and, and Chastity. Just, we have a River Rose in our family. River Ray is his name, so. Uh, 
this I never heard it before Tammy told me about it so congratulations to Tammy she's gonna be Mimi you kind of have to pick your grandmother name what do you want to be I'm Nona so ha, my my grandmother was granny granny Deanie and mother was grandma Peggy so you just have to pick who you want to be as a grandma the main thing is you got to set the example for your for your babies got to set the example for them so with the 30th day stay organized and check your calendar so let me tell you why you check it twice a day your before bed routine gets you ready for tomorrow but if you don't know what's on the calendar for tomorrow you don't know you're not going to know how to get dressed and you need to check your weather so you check your calendar and see what's going on tomorrow and then you can pick your clothes out you can set up your launch pad it's always um, your before bed routine gets you ready for tomorrow and then when you get up in the morning check your calendar I keep my calendar in my bathroom it's the last thing I see at night it's the first thing uh, I see in the morning so I, I know I know what I got to do every single day so folks let's get on to day our our back to basics back to basics we have gotten word that feather dusters are coming they're going to be a little different feather dusters instead of all gray or all black they're going to be a mixture of the two feathers um, because the um, we were having trouble getting both of those feathers and he said but I can get these we've cornered the market on these amazing luxurious feathers I've been messing with my stand this morning because my phone kept falling out of the other one let me see what have I got here this is a that goes way so folks let's talk about day five day five is menu planning knowing what you've got to, knowing what you're gonna cook is half the battle really and Leanne helps us with her saving dinner you sign up for saving dinner you get can get a I think it's a free week of menus if Leanne's on here she can put her link in here and menu planning but the you just have to sit down and think about and get your calendar out get your calendar and check where everybody's going to be next week one of the questions I got this morning was it's it's in our question and answers and I'll get to those in a second but menu planning is uh, Leanne Put a link in to saving dinner and let everybody know that they can get a free week or of um, dinner answers and check that out savingdinner.com yes Leanne's cookbooks are amazing and she wrote her low-carb cookbook for me it was for me for me that's that's my microphone I believe yep I didn't get to do tea time yesterday we were stuck at the hospital doing a uh, cat scan and I didn't have good service there so let's get on with our questions menu planning is an important step because if you can get dinner and you know what's for dinner how many times do you get asked what's for dinner and you don't know well knowing what's for dinner being able to put it in your crock pot in the morning and be ready to cook it's great doing it all your prep ahead of time if you're going to use your instapot bag it all up and then put it in your instapot just a few minutes like 30 minutes before dinner you it's all good because you know what's for dinner your family knows what's for dinner because they can smell it cooking you get your appliances going Leanne's called them for years your indentured servants You've got these appliances, so use them. Utilize them to your advantage. You can do it. So let's get up and get moving and start planning what's for dinner because that's going to take a lot off your plate. It's 
funny. That's kind of a pun. You're going to be putting things on a plate and that's going to take a lot off your plate. But knowing what's for dinner is, is a wonderful feeling. And it makes you feel good inside. It makes you feel good. So I got some questions. And the first question is, when, when menu planning, I find that I am switching days due to life obstacles. God love you. Yep. It's just how it is. That happens to us. How much leeway do you allow yourself to change menu planning? Well, if you do it on post-it notes, let me get my post-it notes here. If you pull off the top of a post-it note, where it's just the sticky part on it, just the sticky part, you can move, you can play musical menus on your, on your calendar by just changing them around. But checking your calendar the night before is going to help you be ready. But when you have the food in the house, when you have the food you need in your house, I'm trying to find my, I have a mini magic wand here. I have a mini magic wand. It's not one Robert made me. Mine, mine but Robert made me special. Um, when you check your men, when you check your calendar, this all goes hand in hand. Checking your calendar the night before allows you. To be able to know that you can put something in your crock pot, make a soup, um, plan for um, plan for um, you know we've got Super Bowl coming up Sunday, Super Bowl's coming up Sunday, so take a little time to plan for that. But you can swap things around when you check your calendar at night. You know where everybody's going to be the next day. And how, if you've got to have a quickie meal like soup and sandwiches, or if you can have a sit down meal with everybody. But try to make it as much of a sit down meal as possible because that's how you teach your children manners. If I run late or not as hungry, I may switch soup for a bigger meal. Is that normal? It's perfect. I said the word perfectly. It's normal. It's okay. Don't beat yourself up. But if you're not hungry, don't eat. But your family's got to eat. So planning, planning your menus and having the food in the house is the first part of the puzzle. Getting it prepared is the second. Okay, how many times a week should I vacuum? We wear shoes inside the house too, and I dread vacuuming. If it was up to me, it would be once a month. That's why you need the carpet sweeper. The carpet sweeper is fun, and the kids want to do it. And you can get stuff up and not have to drag out your vacuum cleaner. The reason you hate to get your vacuum cleaner out, because it's an ordeal. You got to get it out of the closet. You've stuffed it in a closet. It's got too much stuff in it but get your carpet sweeper out and use it because it will get stuff up like you wouldn't believe. Do it. And they're on sale right now. They're $10 off. So get your carpet sweeper today and you're gonna have clean floors and you're not gonna dread using it. When you have a fly lady tool that motivates you to get something done, that's a good tool. That is a good tool. The vacuum is a pain. It's noisy. It wakes the baby up. The carpet sweeper doesn't do that. Our family has at least four winter coats each. Our coat rack is two filled. How many should we keep each? Well, here's the deal. You need a heavy duty winter coat in case you're in the car. I keep my heavy duty winter coat in a in a tote bag and it's in the back seat of my car. The only time I would ever wear that coat is if it is down in the sub-zero range. It is a super duper hot pink coat. I'm not real fond of, uh, of uh, wearing a big heavy coat. But when you need a coat, you don't care what color it is, you need a coat. 
It has my gloves in it. It has a hat in it. So I'm prepared if I need to walk to get to what, if I need to get away from the interstate and set up on a hill waiting for a wrecker to come or whatever, I'm prepared for, for cold weather. And it's also a rain slicker. Um, getting, having too many coats, I have a raincoat and I have a jacket. I have a little fleece jacket that I wear with a hood on it that I can throw up if it rains. I have a raincoat that has a hood on it. So those are three coats. I don't think you, you probably don't have too many because you need one for not so cold weather and you need one for cold weather. So I'm not so sure that, um, that your family is out of whack here. But if you think you have too many, just ha get your family to tell you which one they don't like and go donate them. Because there are people out there that need coats. And bless somebody else with your abundance. You need a lightweight one, you need a raincoat, and you need a heavy duty coat. There you go. And I have a dress coat. I have a really nice black dress coat. Okay, let's see. How should I meal plan? I feel overwhelmed thinking about it and end up buying fast food. It's because you're trying to meal plan at dinner time. You can't meal plan at dinner time. That's not going to work. That is not going to work. So what I want you to do is I want you to get a pad of post-it notes right now. This is our babies. This is our back to basics. And I want you to think about a basic weekly plan for your meals. Think about it. Think about this. Think about it this way. Leanne's on here. She's going to, she's going to love this. But this is how Robert and I do it. We think about Mexican food because we like Mexican food. We like Chinese food. We like burgers. We like, you know, and we like uh, pasta. I don't eat pasta, but I can have zoodles. I can have uh, zucchini noodles. Um, think about Italian, Mexican, Chinese, American. You know, pizza's in there. Always pizza one day. And so this Sunday is hors d'oeuvre Sunday. We do hors d'oeuvres on Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, and Super Bowl. And hors d'oeuvres are a fun meal. So you do wings. Leanne invited us last night. Um, wings and and cheese glock. Robert makes a wonderful cheese glock. And sit down and think about a basic weekly plan to your meals. Do you want to do uh, like a pot roast or a roast chicken on Sundays? Stick it in your, in your um, Instapot and bam. You've got this beautiful pot roast and you hadn't had to do a whole lot to it. I like to throw some potatoes and carrots in there and make a gravy to go in there and yum. Wings, barbecue, and cheese glop. Yep. It doesn't get any better than that. So think about this basic weekly plan. Taco Tuesday. Meatless Monday. Maybe you want to do like vegetables on money. Make a pot of of um, pinto beans and some cornbread. Uh, your guys are going to love that. I mean, they are going to love that. Um, Wednesday, clean out your refrigerator day. That can be surprise chicken. Surprise chicken. It is a wonderful, it, 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 you ne no two surprise chickens are alike. You clean out uh, the salsa and different stuff in there, throw some chicken thighs with it, and bam, you got a wonderful meal. I fixed some one time with a little bit of jerk sauce I had in a jar and Robert says, oh, we got to have some of that. What is cheese glop? It's spinach dip. It's spinach queso is what it is. But Robert makes it homemade. Yep, it is so good. It is so good. Uh, and I'll be having mine with pork rinds. Yep, I'll bring the can of pork rinds. Surprise chicken is is fun because you're cleaning out your refrigerator of all those little little condiment things, little bits of of um, 
ranch dressing and just mix it all up. Throw some chicken thighs or chicken legs or chicken breast in there and you got it. So Friday can be pizza night. Saturday can be um, some wonderful sandwiches, burgers, that sort of thing. Everybody likes burgers on the weekend. And just have fun with it. Have a good time. Yeah, Vanessa, you're here live. But don't wait till you need to go to the grocery store to menu plan. Get you some post-it notes and write some things on it. Just start brainstorming and if just think about what you've eaten this past week. We had Italian one night. Uh, we had burgers another night. Now Rock, Ben's not eating much, but think go back and let it be an exercise in your memory to see what you've had to eat and start making these little post-it notes and sticking them on your calendar. Cut them to fit your calendar just and then when you cook that thing and make your grocery list to go with it, when you cook that thing, then move it down your calendar three weeks, two weeks. Just have this basic weekly plan and you're gonna have fun. Chinese one night, I mean, it's easy to make Chinese at home. You can do a stir fry rice. You, you can uh, stir fry some little pieces of steak and you can have a great dinner at home making Chinese. I make a wonderful, what I call a black sauce. It's really just um, teriyaki sauce and plum wine and oh, it's, it's to die for. We're having a Super Bowl party and I need to get the house in order. Where do I begin? It's called crisis cleaning. Spend 15 minutes in your kitchen, 15 minutes in your living room, and then 15 minutes in the main bathroom of your home. There's nothing like having a Super Bowl party to get your house in order. And you can do it. So invite some people over. Have some fun. You start in your kitchen with a sink full of hot soapy water. Do not leave the kitchen as your, um, as your water's running in the sink. And if you hadn't already bought your chicken wings, you probably won't be able to find them. Now you can, in off season, right now, chip, chicken wings will be more expensive than anything in the grocery store. But you can cook the chicken wings in the oven. You don't have to deep fry them. And you, then you can dip them in the glaze and put them back in the oven in a teriyaki sauce or a barbecue sauce or a hot sauce. Yeah, do not ever put sharp knives in your dishwasher or in the hot soapy water. Which package should I purchase first from the fly shop? You have so many great options. Well, right now we have a great sale going on, the Back to Basics package. It's like $121 regular price, and it is back, it's just, just the facts, ma'am. It's just what you need. Now, it's keep your bathroom clean, do your floors, mop your floors, sweep your floors, it's just ex exactly what you need. So it's $49.95. We still have the FCC pack. It's there, but we're running low on the dusters that go in that pack. So if you want to get the FCC pack, which is everything, everything that we sell practically. And if you want to just add a la carte stuff to the, the, Back to basics pack, you can get the rubber, the carpet sweeper, and you can add the um, the multi one, which is on sale for eight forty seven. So when you add those two things to it, and you have got the you've got a great cleaning package. What do you suggest to do with read books? I have at least 300 in my house. Well, I probably have 500 in my house. If they are books that you use as reference, then keep them, put them in your library so you can reach for them when you need. Robert's always pulling a book out of the library and reading me a paragraph. It's, it's one of the things that I love about him. He quotes poetry to me, he reads poetry to me. It's just wonderful. Um, 
But books you've already read and you don't think you're going to read again, bless someone else with them. Set up a, a little private library. Some people like to put them out in front of their house in exchange library where, where people can borrow the books and take them and read them. So bless someone else with your books if you're not going to read them again. If you are going to read them, then put them in your library and have an organized library, not just mishmash. How do you keep up with your routines while traveling back and forth to Knoxville? Well, I have routines here. I get up at eight o'clock every morning and I get dressed to my lace up shoes. I have on, I don't have on boots today. I have on my little flip, flip. They're not flip flops. They're fit flops. They're, they're tennis shoes. They're shiny. They're black. They're cute. I'll show you. They're cute. See sparkles? I like sparkles. And they don't, the laces don't do anything, but they're hard to get off. They kind of slide on my foot and I'm happy with them. I don't kick them off. And that's kind of like having an exercise glove on your foot. It's just, it, I, I just adore them. So Robert has routines at home and we have a Roomba at home that keeps the floors going while I'm not there, which is wonderful. We have a Roomba here too, but it bothers Ben when it's going. So it doesn't run but a couple of times a week, if that. So uh, I have to do it the old fashioned way with Fly Lady Mop. And we have a new Fly Lady Mop and I don't even have one to show you. But uh, Justin's done a video and it's on our Facebook page and it's on YouTube. And it's purple, it's cute and purple. That's Ben's phone. I'm trying to update it right now. Uh, and he's resting. I didn't want it to bother him. I run an in-home daycare. My living room is nothing but toys. How should you organize? Well, I would get some milk crates. I would get some milk crates. Yesterday, I was asking Ben... I said, we need a milk crate. And he said, I know the milk crate lady. So we went to Miss Sharon's house and sure enough, she had a milk crate. She, she just gave me. And I've got a milk crate underneath this little desk. Get some milk crates. Unless you're going to anchor the, if you have toddlers in the house, your bookcases need to be anchored to the wall. Do you hear me? Your bookcases need to be anchored to the wall because toddlers climb. And if you have a bookcase, you can um, put little drawers in, little cloth drawers, or to or have a label, cute little bins. Yeah, I I have this bookcase at Ben's house that I got these little cloth drawers that fit in the cubbies, and you know it's very efficient. I I need to label them some way, but I know where everything is now, and I have it there. And I'm, I've got a toolbox underneath my bed because I'm the one that uses the tools. And I'm getting things organized. But you need to have a place to put everything. So you need a Lego container. And these, these little drawers are, these cloth drawers are pretty cheap on Amazon. So get the cloth drawers and start organizing stuff into bins. And you can't have Legos around. Yeah, age appropriate, Liz said, because she's got a, a three-year-old in her house. Two, soon to be three, I think. It could be two, but I, these babies grow up so fast. I moved into a one-bedroom apartment from living in a three-bedroom house. It is only my husband and myself, but we have so much clutter. What do you suggest? Well, you've already done it. You've stuffed everything from a three bedroom house into a one bedroom house, a one bedroom apartment. You should have only moved just what you need. Just enough is plenty. That is our motto this year. Decluttering gently in 2020 teaches us that just enough is plenty. So you've got to start this 
this week we're in zone five. So look at your living room and see what it is in your living room you can do without. You are in... Uh, uh, Patty, share, share um, Ken's... I forgot to share Ken's sermon on Sunday with everybody because he was talking about having plenty and it was prosper, being prosperous. Your, your prosperous, this is Robert's quote, you're prosperous in proportion to what you can do without. So let go of the things you don't need anymore and don't save things for just in case because just in case makes your life crazy if you don't have room for it. So bless someone else. Let's see, what is this? Are you still considering a fly lady tool, hammer and screwdrivers? We might be doing that, who knows? Um, let's just say we're looking into it. We've had it before and they sold like crazy cause they were hot pink and cute. Little zippered bag, it was just wonderful. And everything had a place and everything in its place. That's the main thing. I work second shift. My entire day is sleeping in and going straight to work at 3 p.m. How do I fit my morning and before bed routine? Well, you have to rename your routines. You have a get up and go to work routine that you do at 3 p.m. And you have a get home from work at 11 or whenever it is you get home from work. So you, you have a get up and go to work routine and you have a get home from work routine. And if you'll rename them, it'll help you a little bit, bit, little bit better. So your morning routine will be done as you're getting ready to go to work. That's your, that's your morning routine. Okay. What baby steps should I follow for decluttering? Setting your timer. This is the best baby step you can have for decluttering. Setting your timer. And when you set your timer and you do two minutes, two minutes, that's all you got to do. Just do a 27 fling boogie, do a five minute room rescue, run through your house while you're listening to me right now and gather up 27 items to throw away. It could be 27 items, 27 pieces of paper, but you got to get it out of the house. You can't put it in the corner and wait Till you get enough stuff to donate. You need to put it in a bag as you're gathering it all up and take it directly to the car and drop it off at the donation center. And there are donation centers in Knoxville on every corner. I love it. Not that we have a lot of clutter right now, but we got a box of stuff that's been sitting on the extra bed and it needs to go to the donation center. It really does right now. What bait? I already did that one. Okay. That. I'm finished. Two pages. Look at y'all. Look. We did it. Well, I'll see you at 3 o'clock unless I'm headed home. If I'm headed home, I uh, may do it before I leave. May do the show before I leave. So, folks, take some time today to do a little mini plan. If you hadn't done it yet, do some mini plan. I did a 27 flick buggy three times a day for about nine months. And that's how I got rid of our clutter. And when we did a remodel, we, get, we got a dumpster. And having a dumpster, yes, Ken had a wonderful message on Sunday. Well, I love you all. I will see you later. And pray for our country. And pray for Baby River and his mommy. And pray for Mimi. <laughs> pray for Ben and Dina. And pray for me to get home safely. I love you all. I will talk to you later. Bye.